Good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad to have everybody here. I'm Dr. Williams, supervising doctor for Billings Last Diet. I'll do a quick introduction myself and then we'll find out about you. I've been involved in weight loss for about 20 years. Had varying degrees of success with various programs. By far the most successful program that we've used is the one we're going to show you tonight. So we're going to have to talk about success. So I've said I had varying degrees of success, so we're going to define success in just a minute. But by far the most successful is the one that we we're going to show you tonight because we've been doing it for 10 years and we've done the same, pretty much the same program for the last 10 years. So let's talk about what's success in dieting. Help me define what success is in dieting. Successful weight loss with, while maintaining your health. Weight loss while maintaining your health. I like that. Anybody else? Weight loss for how long? Lifetime. Lifetime. So my definition of a healthy weight loss is the ability to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life, just until you're dead. After that, we're safe because nobody gains weight after they're dead. So that's my definition, the ability to lose weight and keep it off the rest of your life. What we're going to show you tonight is a four-phase program. Billy's Last Diet's Protocol is a four-phase program. The first two phases are the weight loss phases. The last two phases are the keep it off for the rest of your life phases. And so this program has been phenomenal for us. We've had uh, thousands of dieters through our program. We've lost over 40,000 pounds of fat. It's been fun and exciting as a, as a doctor as well as the diet coaches to see the lifestyle change, the health benefits, the psychological benefits that all come along with living a healthy life and getting at a healthy, uh, healthy weight as well. So that's a little bit about myself. Let's find out about you. How many of you have known somebody that's done Billings Last Diet? Oh, we're good. We got a pretty good group. There's a few of you that don't know, so you're at a bit of disadvantage. We're not going to leave you at a disadvantage. We're going to catch you up. But how did you hear about our program? Um, my wife works with a guy that goes is in it currently. Okay, so you know of somebody that knows of somebody. Um, the radio, the Aaron Flint show. The Aaron Flint. So you do know somebody, yes. even if you don't know Aaron Flint personally. He's a, so you know. He's a spokesman. Some, and Big J. Mm -hmm. Some of you have heard Big J as well. Okay, so. They're both really good people. If you don't know them personally, they really are both really Is good. Is he still Big J? Yeah, he still has Big J on his jacket. Still got the little, are we teasing that we're going to have to come up with a new name? We've now decided he's big in personality. Uh -oh. <laughs> has anybody seen before and after picture of Big J? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we've got Aaron's up here. We don't have Aaron's up here yet. We have a before and after of Aaron that's, that's coming through as well. So this is Big J. Big J and Little J. So we're, we're all pretty much on the same page that you do know somebody or know of somebody who has known of somebody who has done the program. If you have not ever heard of it before and you didn't know somebody, you're at a bit of a disadvantage because is the diet industry a deceptive industry? Yes. Watch right now. Watch television. They're going to put up a before picture on a diet ad and then they're going to put up an after picture. Nice before picture with a phenomenal after picture. And what does the after picture have? It says in the right, bottom right hand corner of that after picture, what does it say? Not typical. Results not typical, which means what? It's not the same person. Well, I mean, uh, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty trustworthy, so I think so. But what that means is if you're a typical kind of individual, you cannot expect to get the results that we're showing you on TV. Isn't that a little deceptive? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a few before and, pictures of, before and after pictures on the wall. What's missing in the bottom right-hand corner? There's no disclaimer of results not typical, and the reason why? Our results are typical. If you will follow the program the way we'll show it to you tonight, you will get the same results as the people you know, you know of, or you see on the wall. The reason why? This is not a fad diet. This is not a gimmick diet. This is a diet that's based on science. And when you put, if you have an equal sign with a formula here, and you put something in on this side, you always get the something on this side. That means 2 plus 2 always equals 4. 
If you'll do the same with this diet program, you put the effort in here, you will get the results here. So I'm excited to show you the program. And I'm excited to show you the science behind the program. So guess what we're going to talk about for the next several minutes? <laughs> science. Doesn't that sound like fun? It will be. It will be. We're going to do it in a fun format because we're going to do it in a bit of a story format. So we're going to take a 30-pound weight loss program. Anybody want to lose 30 pounds? So if you want to lose 30 pounds, here's what we do. We go to the bookstore and we start on a bookstore diet. In the course of losing 30 pounds on the bookstore diet, we lose 20 pounds of fat, which is good, right? and 10 pounds of muscle. Is that good? When you go off the bookstore diet, what happens? Muscle stays off and the fat comes back. Fat comes back, the muscle does not come back. And so you say, hey, I need to lose weight, so I'm going to try the as seen on TV diet. In the course of losing 30 pound, pounds as seen on TV, you lose 20 pounds of fat and 10 pounds of muscle. And when you go off the as seen on TV diet, what happens? You gain back the fat. What don't you gain back? Muscle. And so you go through another program and another program. And now this is called what? Yo-yo dieting. And every time you yo-yo diet, you trade out muscle and you replace it with fat. Does anybody see a problem with that? So I'm going to introduce a term to you called BMR, or base metabolic rate. Base metabolic rate is how many calories you burn in the course of a day if you're laying on the couch all day. Now, do you burn calories if you lay on the couch all day? Yes, you do. So, if I take a person with 30 pounds more muscle and lay them on a couch all day, and one with 40, 30 pounds less muscle and lay them on a couch all day, who burns more calories while laying on the couch? The one with more muscle. Because as long as you're alive while you're laying on the couch, you have calories that are being burned. So, the one with more muscle burns more calories. So, muscle determines largely what your base metabolic rate is. So, do you see why it's important to know what kind of weight you want to lose? Does it matter to you? It does now. What kind of weight do you want to lose? Fat. Fat and spare the lean body mass. Our four-phase protocol, the first two phases are your fat-burning, muscle-sparing protocol. The last two are keep it off the rest of your life. So, muscle is the largest determiner of what your base metabolic rate is. That's why it's important to keep your muscle when you lose weight. Can you think of anything else that might determine what your base metabolic rate is? Now, we're going to factor out, remember we're laying on the couch, we're going to factor out physical activity, we'll add it in in a minute. So we're going to ignore this for now, but what else determines how many calories you burn in the course of a day, if you're just laying on the couch? Metabolism. What's that? Metabolism. Yeah, and what determines your metabolism? If I scan the group here, I don't see anybody here over 40. But if I were to see anybody over 40, what would you tell me about your metabolism after 40? Decreases. It decreases. Now, I know you're not speaking by experience, but you've heard that that's the case, right? <laughs> so why is it that metabolism decreases at 40? And it's the same for men and women. Because your hormones change at about 40. So those of you that aren't 40 yet... Something you can look forward to is your metabolism will decrease when you're about 40. Hormones determine largely your base metabolic rate as well. Have you known anybody with a thyroid problem? Yeah, that affects your base metabolic rate. So, muscle mass determines your base metabolic rate. Hormone level determines your base metabolic rate. If we add in physical activity to that base metabolic rate, we get a total metabolic rate. The total number of calories you burn in the course of the day. Can you see that everybody's total metabolic rate is going to be different? Different muscle mass, different hormone level, different physical activity level. But we're going to assign everybody here the same metabolic rate just for demonstration purposes. The metabolic rate we're going to assign everybody is 2,000 calories. Where do we get that number from? Because that's basically how many it takes just to run our bodies. It's off of the side of your cereal box. It says, U.S. recommended daily allowance of this vitamin or mineral based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Because we say that's what the normal is for metabolism. So that may be too high for some of you. That may be too low for some of you. But that's what we're going to use for demonstration. 
Where do you get your calories from? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> How about we call it whatever you eat or drink? Food or whatever we drink. So watch, if we consume 2,000 calories of food and we have a 2,000 calorie metabolic rate, how many calories are left over? Zero. Zero. It's called a balanced caloric diet. You're not gaining weight, you're not losing weight, you're staying the same. What happens if I play with the numbers? Okay. I've got an extra 500 calories. Those extra 500 calories are going to circulate in your blood for about a 24 hour period of time. If they're not consumed during that 24-hour period of time, the body says, this is extra energy, store for future use. Where does it store for future use? <laughs> yeah, I don't want an anatomical location, I want a tissue. That's, <laughs> that's called fat. What happens on this day when we consume 1,500 calories and you have a 2,000 calorie metabolic rate? You now have a deficit of 500 calories. Folks, your body has to make up that caloric deficit. If it can't make up that caloric deficit, it's called literally starving to death. Have to have calories to live. So where does your body go to make up that caloric deficit? To your fat. And where else? Muscle. And your muscle. That's why in a 30 pound weight loss program you lose 20 pounds of fat and 10 pounds of muscle. Now I'll show you that scientifically in a minute. Where do you want it to go? You want it to go to the fat. Our four phase protocol, that first phase is fat burning muscle sparing. So what's this? That's a beautiful replica of one pound of fat. Now what is it really? It's really just extra calories that you've consumed in the past that have now been stored for future use. So, how many extra calories are in a pound of fat? 5,000. 5,000? 3,500. 3,500. Close. 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. Now, what does that mean? How do I build one of these? 500 calories extra a day. 500 calories extra a day times 7 days is 3,500 more calories than I burn in order to build a pound of fat. How do you make one go away? Because that's what you want to know. How do you make one go away? Minus 500 calories. It's yeah. the same math as to build one. You have to consume 3,500 less calories than you... Uh, you have to burn 3,500 calories more than you consume in order to make one go away. So now you know how to make one, and now you know how to make one go away. Who gets to be responsible if you're making them or making them go away? You. Now we've started to build an education foundation of how your body works. Folks, if you know how your body works, you can make it work to your advantage. If you don't know how your body works, the food industry will take advantage of you as well. So, base foundation of education for weight loss is 3,500 calories builds a pound of fat. Deficit of 3,500 calories makes a pound of fat go away. That's the only way to make a pound of fat go away. Okay, that's not quite true. There's one other way to make fat go away. Do you know what that's called? Liposuction. That's the only other way is they suck those babies out of there. So if you want to cut through a lot of the garbage in the weight loss industry, you just say, how does that burn more calories than, or how does that burn 3,500 more calories in order to help me lose a pound of fat? So if they say, just drink this at night and the fat just melts off, think, hmm, how does that happen? And you'll cut through a lot of the garbage in the weight loss industry. So you've all heard this story before, right? Calories in versus calories out. But what most people are missing is how many calories in versus calories out for a pound of fat. So how many calories in a pound of fat? 3,500. Don't forget that for the rest of your life. Because then you'll have a better idea of how to lose weight and how to keep it off the pressure. I'll ask you a whole bunch more times before we're done tonight about how many calories in a pound of fat because it's that important for you to remember. 
All right, so if it's a matter of calories in versus calories out, which it is, does it make sense that I can increase my physical activity and lose weight? Yes, that's called exercise to lose weight. Does it work? Everybody go like this, whether you want to or not, you go like this. Does it work as fast as you think it should work? Is it as easy as you think it should be? And the reason is, is we have twisted thinking, particularly in the United States, about exercise and weight loss. We think it's easier to lose weight through exercise than it really is. So let me untwist our thinking a little bit by looking at the science of exercise and weight loss. Let's take two individuals. One individual weighs 150 pounds. Another individual weighs 200 pounds. We're going to take these two individuals and we're going to exercise them to lose weight. The exercise we're going to do is walking. We're going to do a standard walking pace of 2.5 miles per hour. We're going to walk them until they've burned one pound of fat, which is how many calories? How long does a 150-pound person have to walk at a standard walking pace in order to burn one pound of fat? The answer is in hours, not in minutes. Any guesses on how many hours of walking to burn one pound of fat for a 150-pound person? Give me a guess. Five. Five. Any other guesses? Three. Three. Five plus three is? Eight. Times two? <laughs> wow. Is 16 hours wow. of walking. It doesn't work like you think it works. Now, this 200-pound individual... Google it if you don't believe me. Go Google how much it... So a 200-pound individual is going to burn more calories while walking because it's more energy expended to move. But it's still 12 hours of walking. It just doesn't work like you think it should. Now, I've got some friends across the parking lot here at Granite Fitness. January 1st. I look over there, what does that parking lot look like? What's the reason they're there? <laughs> New Year's resolution to lose weight, and they're going to do it through exercise because everybody knows that's the best way to lose weight, right? February 1st, I look across that parking lot. I've been here nine years, ten years. I look across that parking lot. What happens to that parking lot on February 1st? Half the people are gone. March 1st, just a few weeks ago, I look across the parking lot. What does it look like? The same as it does the other nine months of the year. <laughs> now, what happened during that two or three month period of time? Is everybody over there lost the weight they wanted to lose, right? No, what did they lose? Their gift membership from Christmas? Their gift membership. <laughs> <laughs> they lose the motivation before they lose the weight because it's harder than they thought it was going to be. They're over there working out on a treadmill. Anybody, anybody work out on a treadmill? Yep, me too. That's what I do for sanity purposes. I run. I run. I put my treadmill on a 7.5. Those that are working out on treadmills, tell them that's not a walk. That's not a jog. That's a run. 30 minutes on my treadmill. My treadmill counts calories. I burn about 500 calories while running on my treadmill for 30 minutes. So if I'm going to exercise to lose weight, how many days a week do I have to run on my treadmill in order to burn one pound of fat? every day of the week to burn one pound of fat. Is it starting to make sense now to you? A marathon. How far is a marathon? 26 miles. 26.2. And I will tell you the point two makes a difference after the first 26. <laughs> Average marathoner will burn about 3,500 calories wow. running a marathon. That doesn't sound worth it. <laughs> Not all at once. So I'm convinced if the people next door knew what it was going to take, they would stick with it longer. They wouldn't start, but they would stick with it longer, and they wouldn't get as discouraged. We just have to get some straightened out thinking about exercise and weight loss. Now, I don't want anybody here to ever say, Dr. Williams doesn't think exercise is important. Is exercise critical to any successful long-term weight loss program? And the answer is yes. It's Critical. Why? Because it burns so many calories? No. What does it do? Tones you. It tones you. It builds muscle or it maintains muscle. So if you can increase your base metabolic rate, it means you can eat more food and not gain weight. Exercise is phenomenal to help you keep the weight off. 
those of you who listen to Big J and also Aaron Flint, what are they doing to help maintain their weight? Exercise. They're exercising. Mm -hmm. Didn't work to lose, but it does work to help maintain. Make sense? Any questions on exercise and weight loss? All right. So, if we don't do it through exercise, which there is exercise involved in Billings Last Night Protocol, we're just going to put it in the right spot. How do we do it at Billings Last Diet? We do it through what you eat or what you don't eat. Everything you eat, everything you drink falls under three big food categories. So what are your three big food categories? Help me out. Carbohydrates. Carbs. Proteins. Proteins. Fats. And fats. So everything you eat is either a carb, protein, or fat, or a combination of these. So Let's identify what our carbohydrates are, what our proteins, and what our fats are. So what are our carbohydrates? Let's list them. Bread. Bread. Sure. Pasta. And I'm going to get it with all grains. I heard somebody say potatoes. Not just potatoes, but all vegetables are carbohydrates, as are all fruits. I heard somebody say sugar. Sugar. And in case you didn't know, that's called candy, cookies, Okay. Oh, we'll get it. We'll get it. Anything good tends to be a carbohydrate. Alcohol, also a carbohydrate. What are our proteins? Meat. Meat, fish. Beans, nuts, beans, and legumes. So we're going to put nuts, beans, and legumes as a primary protein, but you need to know that there's also carbohydrates in nuts, beans, and legumes, and there's some fats as well. But we're going to list it as a primary protein. We do the same thing with dairy. Knowing there's some carbohydrates, sometimes a lot of fat, and sometimes a little fat, depending on our dairy choice. There's some fats in those as well. Eggs. Eggs, another good source of protein. It's our perfect protein. Any animal byproduct. What's that? Any animal byproduct. Largely, yes. So eggs, there's also some fat in the eggs as well. Our fats, our plant oils are fats. Everything's better with? Butter. If you thought blue bonnet on it, it's because you're old. So yes, <laughs> butter. <laughs> and then your animal fats or your lards are also fats. So you have a general idea what a carb, what a protein, what a fat is. So early 1990s, the United States government said, our people just aren't very healthy. So we're going to teach them to eat right. And they devised this thing called the food pyramid. They said if you'll eat according to the food pyramid, you'll be healthy. What did the food pyramid look like? Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Upside down, wrong, yes. Carbs, proteins, and fats. Because we were supposed to be eating a base of carbohydrates, what happened to our carbohydrate intake? More. It went up. Our protein intake has gone down, and somehow we missed the small triangle on the top of the food pyramid of fat, and what happened to our fat intake is it went way up. Now, why is our fat intake gone way up? It's a French fries. Yeah, what do you call it when you put a fat and a carbohydrate together? What's that called? Delicious. That's called yummy. <laughs> Watch it. That's a donut, ice cream, buttered popcorn, french fry, potato chip. They taste good together. When you put a fat and a carbohydrate together and it tastes good, the food industry says, look, we put these together, guess what people do? They eat them. And now we have a whole industry based on putting fats and carbohydrates together. What's that industry called? Fast food. Fast food. Look at the menu. It's fats and carbohydrates combined together. Folks, this type of eating has got us to where we are as a nation today. And how are we doing? We're number one. We're number one in obesity. So watch. If you're the bus driver, meaning you're driving the bus, and you're driving a bus and it's headed toward the cliff, the name of the cliff is obesity. What's at the bottom of the cliff? Death. So if you're driving the bus toward the, head, the cliff of obesity, doesn't it make sense that you ought to step on the brake? Slow the bus down, stop the bus, put the bus in reverse, and back yourself out of the problem. Well, that's what we do at Billings Last Diet. We slow the bus down, put the bus in reverse, and back. you help you back out of the problem. Now, once you're back where you want to be, the goal is not to repeat the trip, but to make a lifestyle change so you can keep that weight off for the rest of your life. 
So phase one and phase two of the diet is a decreased carb, increased protein, decreased fats in order to counteract that imbalance. Phase three and phase four will teach you to combine carbs, proteins, and fats in a balanced fashion so you can keep that weight off for the rest of your life. That's what we were teaching the group that just left, the graduating dieters, is now let's how are we going to keep maintain this weight for the rest of our lives. Does that make sense? The food pyramid, does this make sense? No, it never made sense. It was never, it's not based on science. It was never based on science. It's based on food lobbying in Washington, D.C. A known failure. They changed it three or four times. Now it's a known failure. They don't teach it anymore. Now it's taught in a plate. Way more accurate. This is just simply wrong. No other way to say it. All right. Any questions on carbs, proteins, or fats? So, carbs, proteins, and fats. All carbohydrates, proteins, and fats turn into one primary source of energy that the body utilizes as its primary fuel source. That primary source of energy happens to be a sugar that it turns into. Do you know the name of the sugar? Glucose. Glucose. My writing gets better the longer we go. Glucose. So watch. Carbohydrates turn into glucose. Proteins turn into glucose and fats turn into glucose. Now you need to know that a carbohydrate turns into glucose faster than a protein, which turns into glucose faster than a fat. Another way of saying it, a carbohydrate is easier to digest than a protein, which is easier to digest than a fat. Now I want you to look at the carbohydrate list. Pretend you can read what I wrote. Are all carbohydrates created equal? No. What's the difference between Candy and cauliflower. Fiber. She said taste. Can everybody agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> she said fiber. Yeah. Processed. Processed. Nutrition. Fiber. Empty. Candy is an empty calorie. Do you know what an empty calorie means? Metabolism. No nutrients, only calories. So how fast does candy turn into glucose? Isn't halfway glucose already? It is. <laughs> exactly halfway glucose. Sucrose, which is table sugar, which we make out of, out of uh, candy, or we make candy out of glucose, sucrose. You put sucrose in your mouth, there's an enzyme in your mouth called amylase that divides it immediately into glucose. Breaks it down into glucose and it's absorbed immediately into the blood. Happens that fast. How fast does cauliflower turn into glucose? Slow. Doesn't happen in your mouth. That's why it doesn't taste as good. <laughs> it has to go clear through the digestive system into the small intestine before it releases the glucose to be absorbed by the body. Does that make sense? So one of these simply turns into sugar, so we call it a simple carbohydrate. One of them's hard to turn into sugar, so we call it a complex carbohydrate. That's where those two terms came from. Simple and complex carbohydrates. This was the biggest problem with the food pyramid. We didn't distinguish between simple and, carb simple and complex carbohydrates. We said they're the same. Well, they're as different as candy is to cauliflower. Very different physiological effect on the body. Make sense? Glucose. So if glucose is the primary source of energy that the body utilizes, how important do you think it is to have glucose in your body? Pretty important. Like if you don't have glucose in your body, that's called being dead. That's how important it is to have glucose. So you have to have glucose all the time. Does that mean you have to eat all the time? No, and you don't have to eat all the time because you store glucose in three gas tanks. So you can get from one meal to the next without dying. Convenient, don't you think? So whatever you, be, you ate before you came to dine, carb, protein, or a fat, or a combination of these, has now been turned into glucose. And where is this glucose circulating right now? In your blood. So your first gas tank is your blood glucose gas tank. And as I'm droning on and on here, what's happening to this gas tank? Because I'm not feeding you. And if I keep you here long enough, that gas tank will go empty, and the body will say, I've got to have glucose. What's the next easiest thing to turn into glucose? Protein. Where do you have protein if I'm not feeding you? Muscles. Your next gas tank is your muscle protein. 
Now your body will start to chew on itself, turn it into glucose so you can continue to live. It'll turn into glucose. Whether it's a dietary fat or a tissue fat, it's the hardest thing to do. But it will happen. And this is the process that happens when we restrict your food intake, put you in a caloric deficit called a diet, and now your body has to go through this process to make up that caloric deficit. So in a 30 pound weight loss program, now you lose 10 pounds of muscle and 20 pounds of fat. Does that make sense? Now, do you like this idea? No, we don't like that idea because it goofs up our base metabolic rate. So when the body's coming to this muscle protein, what is it really looking for? Protein. So what if we give you a dietary source of protein? How much? The ideal amount of protein. When this gas tank goes empty, we're going to give you an ideal amount of protein to keep you out of that lean body mass, and they'll still go up to that fat burning mode, into that fat gas tank. And now we spare that lean body mass, and now instead of losing 10 pounds of muscle and 20 pounds of fat, we lose 30 pounds of fat. We now have a fat-burning, muscle-sparing protocol. So what's in the package? Protein. Protein. How much? The ideal amount of protein to keep you out of the lean body mass and get you in the fat-burning mode. There's 18 to 20 grams of high-quality, bioavailable protein. Now, why does the body come to this protein instead of my muscle protein? It's easier. Easier. So how hard is it to digest steak? That's what muscle protein is. How hard is it to digest baby food? Okay, it's not baby food, it's diet food, but it's like baby food, and the term is it is more bioavailable. And the body will always take the path of least resistance, take the easiest thing. So the body comes to this protein instead of to your muscle protein. So 18 to 20 grams of high quality bioavailable protein. The ideal amount of protein to keep you out of the lean body mass and get you into the fat burning mass. You're now using what as your source of energy to make up that caloric deficit? Fat. And how many calories do I have to pull out of this gas tank to make one of these go away? And every time you pull 3,500 calories out of that gas tank, one of these go away. When you're using fat as your primary source of energy, your body goes into a physiological state called ketosis. ketosis. When we started teaching this 10 years ago, nobody knew what ketosis was. Now everybody has heard of the ketogenic diet, right? Mm -hmm. Become popularized in the past two years. Ketosis, folks, or ketogenic diets, is simply using fat as a source of energy, as a primary source of energy. So you're going to be in ketosis. When you're in ketosis, you're, using, you're burning fat how many hours a day? 24/7. You're telling me you can burn fat while you sleep? My body can. As long as, you, <laughs> as long as you're still alive while you're sleeping and you have those energy requirements, if it's primarily coming from fat, you'll be in ketosis 24 hours a day. You'll be burning fat 24 hours a day. That is why the weight loss comes off so fast. So, ladies, you'll lose on an average two, three, or four pounds of fat per week. How will men do? Better. Better. Why? Awesome. More muscle mass. Life's not fair. We're <laughs> jerks. We've heard it all. Look at the base metabolic rate. Men, we have more muscle than ladies do. We also have a different hormone panel than you do. We have more testosterone than you do. Even though I'm 50, I still have more testosterone than you do. And testosterone is a hormone, there's a metabolism booster which is why at 40 our metabolism goes down because our testosterone levels go down. But we still have more than you. And physical activity level. Some men have more of a physically active lifestyle than ladies. But that's the reason why. It's because our base metabolic rate is different. So how will men do? Four, five, six, seven pounds of fat per week. Now ladies, don't get depressed. Don't get mad at us. Two, three, four pounds of fat is not too bad compared to running on a treadmill at a 7.5 Every day of the week in order to lose how many pounds of fat? One. 
So you'll be losing two, three, or four pounds of fat per week. That's the reason the weight comes off so fast. Any questions on that? Anybody want to get into the fat gas tank? Yep, that's why you're here. What has to happen to that gas tank before you get into the fat gas tank? That one has to be empty. How long does it take to empty the blood glucose? Three to four days. What's the hardest part of the whole program? Three to four days. First three to four days, because day one, day two, day three, we know we're going to drop your blood glucose levels. When we drop your blood glucose levels, what happens to your energy levels? They go down. When your blood glucose levels are down, your energy levels down, what happens to your cravings? They go up. And what do you crave? Robina, lettuce, and celery sticks? No, you want quick carbohydrates to fill it back up. So just know, day one, day two, day three, your blood glucose levels are going to be down, your energy levels are going to be down, your cravings are going to be through the roof. They're going to scream at you. Now I promise you, if you do not give in to the screamings or the cravings, you will not die. It just feels like you're going to die. And you put that off for that third day and the fourth day the body says, she's not giving me energy, he's not giving me energy, I have got to find energy somewhere else. And so it kicks into this process called ketosis after that three to four days, and then the magic happens. Your blood glucose levels come out of the depths of despair along with your energy levels, and they rise like this. And the cool thing is, once you're in ketosis, those energy levels stay nice and steady. So just know the hardest part is that first week until we get you into ketosis. Once you're into ketosis, people that have been in ketosis three or four weeks, they'll say, I have not had this kind of energy for years. My morning slump's gone or my afternoon slump's gone. You know what I mean, right? And so why is their morning slump gone and their afternoon slump gone? Because they're using fat as their primary source of energy and that their energy levels are nice and steady. Before, when your blood glucose levels went low and you got hangry, what did the television tell you to do? Yes. Eat a Snickers candy bar. When you eat a Snickers candy bar, what happens to your blood glucose levels? They spike like this. When you spike your blood glucose levels, your pancreas kicks out a bunch of insulin. When it kicks out a bunch of insulin, now what happens to your blood glucose levels? That's the crash that happens after you eat a Snickers candy bar. And so you eat a bagel. And you spike your blood glucose levels, your pancreas kicks out a bunch of insulin, and it crashes. So you eat a bag of potato chips. You spike your blood glucose levels, you're in you see the pattern? And we ride the roller coaster ride of energy. Does anybody like the roller coaster ride of energy? No. And every time you spike your blood glucose levels, your pancreas takes a kick. Your pancreas takes a kick. Your pancreas takes a kick, and pretty soon your pancreas says, I don't like this game, I give up. What's that called? <laughs> that is type 2 diabetes. So get off the roller coaster ride. And what we did to try to get off the roller coaster ride before is we said, hey, before you just eat more often, we don't get so high and so low with our blood glucose levels. What's the problem with eating more often? More calories. We can accumulate too many calories. So get off the roller coaster ride and get in ketosis and you'll have nice steady energy. <clears throat> All right. So let's fast forward you three weeks into the diet. You're doing great. You're losing two, three, four, five, six, seven pounds of fat per week. Your energy levels are up. When you're in ketosis, it's a natural appetite suppressant, so you're not that hungry. Your cravings decrease. They don't go away, but they decrease hugely. Before, when you couldn't walk by the bowl of M&Ms without having a few, now you're not even tempted. So you're three weeks in. You're doing great. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, and you go to the break room. What happens when you, what do you find in the great break room? Donuts. As you walk in the door, a donut accosts you and jumps down your throat. Now, when that donut accosts you and jumps down your throat, what happens to this gas tank? It fills up. And what happens to this fat-burning process? It stops. Folks, there are some foods we eat that fill this gas tank up so fast it stops the fat-burning process. It stops, it kills ketosis. Donuts happens to be one of those foods. So what's it called? Or how many calories in a pound of fat? <laughs> What's it called when the donut accosts you and jumps down your throat? Other than unfortunate. It's called cheating. What's the key to the diet? No cheating. You physiologically cannot eat a donut 
and be in ketosis at the same time. So now you know why you can't eat the donut. Now you're more liable to comply rather than because I told you so, that's why you can't eat the donut. Now you know why. Now you can think of some other things that might interfere with that fat burning process as well, right? And we'll talk about a few more tonight as well. But that's the reason why. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? That is the science that we're going to utilize for your weight loss. Get into ketosis, burn the fat by <coughs> what we eat that keeps that gas tank low. All what right. Is, what does caffeine do to help you get into that? So it will not interfere with ketosis. Why are you eat, drinking caffeine? Have it. Okay, I'll give you that. Some people say for energy, and I say you won't need it when you're in ketosis because your energy is light. Okay. So we'll talk about coffee and tea okay. in a minute. Okay. So this is the most important thing for you to know. Now I know my handwriting is spectacular, spectacular and I know you all have photographic memories, so you remember all that, right? <laughs> yeah, but in case you didn't, I do have a handout for you. This handout will give you a summary of what we just talked about. Take one and pass it down, if you would. How, how do the, the um, artificial sweeteners? They will affect it as well. We'll talk about that when we get into the phases. The review of the phases, we'll talk about artificial sweeteners. Remind me if I don't mention them particularly. We'll talk about flavored waters, which is in a lot of times artificial sweeteners. So, this makes sense to you then, right? You understand carbs, proteins, and fats all turning into glucose, going through the three gas tanks, avoiding the middle gas tank of the lean body mass by giving you the ideal amount of protein, getting into the fat burning mode. The very bottom says 3,500. You know what that means, right? Now focus on the red writing in the middle. If you're 100% dedicated to the program, you get how much success? 100%. What's the next line say? 80% dedication gets you 10% success. Now, folks, that's not fair, but that's, we've already established that life's not fair. That's the way it works. Ketosis is an all-or-none deal, largely. I like to say ketosis is a lot like pregnancy. Do you flirt with being pregnant? No, you either are or you aren't. I also like to say it's a lot like marriage. You can't cheat and expect it to work. So this is not one of these diets that I'm going to try it out and see how it does. If you try it out like this, you will not get the results. It's one of these diets. I'm all in. You're all in, you get all the results. So do it like Aaron, do it like Big J. Be all in, you'll get the results. Stay 100% dedicated to the program. Any questions? Very good. How much have I talked about the product? I've shown you a packet and that's it. Told you there's 18 to 20 grams of high quality bioavailable protein. The miracle is not in the product. The miracle is in the process. It's in your normal fat burning capabilities. This is why our results are typical. It's not a gimmick. We simply use the product to access this normal physiology. So I'm going to introduce you a little more to the product and we'll also talk about the four phases. I've already introduced the four phases a little bit but we'll show it in a little more detail. So this is a four phase protocol. First two phases are your weight loss phases. Last two phases are your Keep it off the rest of your life. You're going to be in phase one until you've burned 100% of the fat you want to burn. We're going to get you into ketosis until you've burned the amount of fat you want to burn. Then you go into phase two. Phase two is for two weeks. Then we go into phase three for two weeks. And then we go into phase four. Any guesses on how long you're in phase four? Just until you're dead. We're going to come to your funeral and say, here lies successful dieter. Lost the weight, kept it off the rest of their life. So, I can't tell you with enough passion and without enough emphasis, we do not want you to start the program unless you're committing to how many phases of the diet? 
all four. Otherwise, you'll gain the weight back. So stick with it, and we'll show we'll make it easy for you to do long term. So let's look at phase one first. Phase one looks like this: breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. IP stands for ideal protein. It's the name of the product we utilize. So for breakfast, we're going to take our handy dandy shaker, put water in there, take your chocolate drink, put it in there, and shake it up and drink it. You'll have 18 to 20 grams of high quality bioavailable protein. The ideal amount of protein to keep you out of that lean body mass and get you into the fat burning mode. So that's what's for breakfast. What if you don't like chocolate drink for breakfast? Pick a different flavor. Then pick a different flavor of drink for breakfast. Good idea. <laughs> But what if you don't want to drink for breakfast? Well, if you don't want to drink for breakfast, you might have a fine urban cheese omelet for breakfast instead. And a fine urban cheese omelet is a silver packet as well, only it says fine urban cheese omelet mix on it. Take your water in your shaker, put your contents of your packet in there and shake it up and cook it up as a scrambled egg or as an omelet. That's what's for breakfast. Or you might have a pancake that comes out of a silver packet. Or a cereal. Or an oatmeal. There's several different oatmeals that come out of a packet. They'll give you your 18 to 20 grams of high quality bile available. So that's what's for breakfast, silver packet. What's for lunch? A silver packet is also for lunch. And there's a whole, whole bunch of different things that back there you can try. There's soups and entrees and all kinds of things that come out of a silver packet. But it's another silver packet. In addition to the silver packet, you're going to have two cups of vegetables. Now, are these any old vegetables? No. Which ones are not on the list? Starchy. The ones you like. <laughs> Which are? Starchy. Starchy like? <clears throat> carrots, carrots, potatoes, peas, corn. corn, beets, and orange squash. Now, what do these all have in, fav have in common? Sugar. They're your starchier vegetables. The starchier the vegetable, the faster they turn into sugar. In fact, they turn into sugar so fast they do what to the first gas tank? And what happens to that fat burning process? So eating those vegetables would be called cheating. Cheating. And what's the key to the diet? Don't cheat. And how many calories in a pound of fat? You're getting the idea? So those six vegetables you can't have for that very reason. Now, there's a whole bunch of vegetables you can have, and some of them you can have unlimited amount of. But those six you can't have, and that's the reason why. So, two cups of vegetables for lunch, along with your silver packet. For dinner, five to eight ounces of a protein source. Beef, chicken, fish, pork, wild game, frog legs, large selection that you can choose from, and generous in amount as well. Now, that's not five to eight ounces of bacon, however. It's going to be your leaner cuts of meat. And then you're going to have two cups of vegetables again for dinner. And then sometime during the day, you're going to have an ideal protein for a snack. Now, it's written at the end of the program when you get your folder with your outline. It says snack at the end. doesn't mean you have to have the snack at night. You can have it mid-morning, mid-day, night, anytime. Just get your three packets of protein in in a day. How many cups of vegetables? Four total. How many cups of fruit? Zero. What? Why no fruit? Sure. I thought fruit was good for you. It is good for you. Did anybody gain too much weight by eating apples? <laughs> eating apples will not make you fat. But will eating an apple keep you from burning fat? That's hard for people to understand. So that's why there's no fruit during the first two phases, because it stops ketosis. Now you're going to be missing some nutrients, so we're going to put you on a supplement that's designed to make up the difference so you don't get malnourished while you're on the diet, but no fruit for the first two phases. Comes back in phase three. How much fat? There's a little bit of fat, but remember that's not bacon, so there's not much. There's not enough fat, so you're going to have two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil every day. Now you can put it on a salad, saute your vegetables with it, drink it. We don't care. Just get your two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil in a day so you get the right amount of fat. 64 ounces of water every day. I can't tell you gently, so I'll just tell you straight up. Folks, when you start this diet, you're going to pee a lot. <laughs> so 
There's physiological reasons for that. I won't go through the, and explain why. If you'd like me later, I will. But if you don't make up the difference, you're going to get dehydrated. So you need 64 ounces of water every day. When you throw off all that water, you also lose minerals, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. We don't want you to have an electrolyte imbalance. We don't want you to have to demineralize, so you'll use calcium, magnesium, and potassium supplements while you're in the first two phases as well. So here we go. Anything else you want to drink besides water? That's your clue. Anything coffee. you want to drink besides water? <laughs> coffee. Coffee. So let's talk about coffee and tea. Yes, you can have coffee and tea. Black? I'm not getting this from everybody. So we'll deal with both of you. So black coffee, we're good. For every cup of coffee you drink, you have to increase your water by the amount of coffee you drink. So if you drink 8 ounces of coffee, you're now at 72 ounces of water. Coffee, uh, caffeine's a dehydrator. For those of you that want a little sweeter, creamier coffee, visit with a diet coach. We have a pre-made vanilla drink that works great as a creamer for your coffee. And then there's also recipes to make your frou-frou coffee that you like anyway, that you can make it taste good. So that's coffee and tea. Anything else you want to drink? Good. Herbal tea will count towards your 64 ounces. Okay, yep, yep, sure does. Mm -hmm. you can't have honey in it, but yes. Well, I have a pack of uh, you can sugar. use <laughs> you can use those artificial sweeteners. Let's talk about those artificial sweeteners. You can use them. You have to be careful. They're a little deceptive because they say they're zero, 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 zero calories, zero carbs, zero fats, but it's because it's the amount. You get too much of it, you're going to get too many carbs. So be careful with your artificial sweeteners, but you can use those. Yes. Anything else you can want to drink that I might be able to take away from you? Beer. 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 Yeah. Well, let's talk about alcohol. Sad. Sad. You already know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> alcohol is processed through which organ? The liver. The liver. Fat is processed through which organ? The liver. The liver. <laughs> So the liver will stop all other processes to process the poison, which is called alcohol. So nothing will throw you out of ketosis faster or keep you out of ketosis longer than alcohol. No alcohol. Folks, it's dangerous to drink alcohol while you're on the diet. You have some sugar handling problems that happens. Our, the, our medical director happens to be a cardiologist. Before he was our medical director for Ideal Protein Corporate, he was on the diet as a patient. He went to his one of his children's weddings, and he drank a glass of wine, passed out. There's sugar handling problems that happen with that when you're in ketosis, so no alcohol. If you can't do the first three phases, we'll show you how alcohol comes back in phase four. If you can't do the first three phases without alcohol, this is not the program for you. Find something else. Fair enough? Yeah. Anything else I can take away? You were saying <laughs> about flavored waters. Flavored waters. Yes, you can have flavored waters. No more than 20 ounces a day. If you don't know what a flavored water is, it has to be a zero, 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 zero calories, zero carbs, zero fats. So meal water, uh, Powerade Zero, Crystallite, vitamin water, there's a whole bunch of them out there. You just have to be careful because of the artificial sweeteners in them. No more than 20 ounces a day. So what about Diet Coke and Diet? Okay, are you a popaholic? No, I'm not a popaholic. Okay, good. So if you're not a popaholic, it's better not to use yeah, any of it because it's bad for you. Yeah, but what happens if you need a uh, pick-me-up <laughs> at 3 o'clock when you're working on your computer? You won't be because you're being ketosis in your energy <laughs> level. But if by chance you do, you can get away with one 12-ounce can of diet soda a day. If you're not a popaholic, don't start drinking. It's bad for you, people. Did you know that? Like coffee, do they? Sorry, I don't, I don't drink coffee. But so do you have to uh, um, increase your a, water because it's caffeinated? Yes. yes, if it's a caffeinated beverage, you have to increase your water by the amount of, of so if it's a 12-ounce can, you have 12 more ounces of water to drink. Does it matter if it's dark soda compared to light soda? Somebody no. was telling me dark. Dark is worse for you, mainly because of the phosphoric acid in it. It causes like kidney stones or anything. It does, and it's also, so, so don't sidetrack me too far, but I'm going to sidetrack a little bit. Folks, do you know why we have teenage girls with osteoporosis? It's because of pop. 
So your body has to have a phosphoric acid and a calcium balance in the body. And so when they're drinking pop, which is phosphoric acids in pop, when they're drinking pop, it's leaching calcium out of their bone in order to balance the phosphoric acid. Tragedy that we have osteoporosis with teenagers is because we're drinking pop. So Pop's not just the girls, boys also. What's that? So not just the girls, but the boys also. Yes. Girls more, more so girls, uh, women have more problems with osteoporosis than boys simply because the makeup of our bones are denser. So we have more to lose before it shows up on an x-ray as osteopenia or osteoporosis than not. See, so yeah, you got me way sidetracked. <laughs> Interesting note, those slight women have a higher risk of osteoporosis than heavier women. Why? Less pressure on the bone. And that bone goes away as long as you've got more pressure on the bone, which gives you a good reason to exercise after you lose weight, because that keeps your bone healthy. Any other questions on what you can drink or any? All right, that's phase one. Phase one, we're in phase one until we've lost 100% of the weight we want to burn. Then we go into phase two. Phase two looks just like phase one. The only thing we do is we back out one of your ideal protein packets and get you onto more real foods. We do that for a two-week period of time. Then we go into phase three. Phase three, breakfast, lunch, and dinner are going to be real foods. This is happy dance time, folks, when we hit phase three. We've lost the amount of weight we want to lose, and foods come back that we've been missing. Fruit comes back. Whole grain comes back. Dairy all comes back in phase three. We'll show you how to introduce it appropriately by bringing you back for a graduating class where we start to teach these principles. There's also one ideal protein packet in phase three that you're going to have every day. So one ideal protein packet is backed out. Then we go into phase four after those two weeks of transition. Phase four is for the rest of your life. If phase four is for the rest of your life, don't you think it better be pretty reasonable? Something you, you can do for how long? The rest of your life. And so let me give you an idea of what phase four looks like. Five days a week, you're going to eat as we teach you to eat, combining carbs, proteins, and fats appropriately, like you're supposed to. That's five days a week. Your six days, your fun day, your cheat day, your party, your holiday. What do you get to eat on that day? Sugar. <laughs> yeah, name whatever you want, and the answer is yes. You can have whatever you want that day. Now, why would we make a program where in maintenance you could have whatever you want once a day? Or excuse me, once ah. a week. <laughs> Strike that, once a week. Why would we do that? So you don't cheat. Yes. How long can you live a deprived life? Some of you, two seconds, some two minutes, some two weeks, two months, two years, eventually you're going to give in. So we build a program to where once a week, you can have whatever you want. Now, what's the risk you have whatever you want on that one day a week? Going back. Falling off the wagon. Falling off the wagon, accumulating too many calories. But remember those extra calories you consume on that cheat day? They circulate in your blood for 24 hours, about 24 hours. If not consumed, then they get stored as fat. So you have how long to compensate for that extra calorie day of a cheat day? 24 hours. So after your fun day, your cheat day, your, pop, your, your holiday, you come back and you eat in phase one. Or you could run a marathon. For one day or go run a marathon. <laughs> your choice. <laughs> for one day. And then you go back eating five days like you're supposed to. Have your fun day. Have your cleanup day. Does that make sense? If you can't see some semblance of eating that way for the rest of your life, don't start the program. Now, the great thing is we're going to have coaches that are going to show you the principles of how that works in real life. Because your life doesn't really serve you up five days, one day, one day. But they'll show you the principle and coach you through how to keep that weight off the rest of your life. Any questions on the phases? Very good. Any questions on cost? Good. No questions on cost. <laughs> Let's go through the cost of the diet. The cost of the diet is about $15 a day. And I'll bet everybody has already heard that before. It's about $15 a day. Now, there is a one-time consultation fee. How many times? One-time one consultation fee. Don't you run for the door. It's worth $5,000 because it's a... One time consultation fee. And you're going to visit with a diet coach once a week during phase one. Once a week during phase two. Once a week during phase three. Once a week for phase four for the first month. Every other week for the second month. Once a month for the third through the twelfth month. 
And once you've paid your one-time consultation fee, you don't ever pay it again for the rest of your life. So it's worth a lifetime consultation fee that's worth $5,000. But wait, if you act in the next 30 seconds, <laughs> it's a $50 consultation fee. I was ready to run. <laughs> I told you not to run for the door. So that's included. Here's your hard startup cost. Here's what it costs to start the diet. $299.40. 50 of it is a consultation fee. Also built into the 299.40 is three months of BCA. BCA stands for body composition analysis. It's our instrument over here that tells us how you're doing on the diet. Each week you're going to come in, you'll do a body composition analysis. It'll tell us how many pounds of muscle you have, how many pounds of fat you have. It'll tell us what your hydration level is. It'll tell us what your base metabolic rate is. It shocks you if you cheat. Okay, we're still working on that technology. But it's our way of seeing how you're doing on the program. Three months of those read is also built into the 299.40. That's a $50 value built into that. The rest of that 299.40 is your startup kit. Your startup kit is going to give you four boxes of protein to start with. Now, you're only going to need three boxes a week. So why would we start you with four boxes the first week? Can you get hungry? <laughs> hardest part of the program is the first three to four days. If you're going to be hungry, it's going to be in the first week. And so you can have an extra packet of protein a day if you need it. The other reason is, you're going to come and visit with a diet coach once a week. What if your schedule only lets you come in nine days? Wouldn't you like to have a little extra for that for the two days you were there? So we're going to start you out with four boxes of food. You're going to have a month's worth of nutrients in your packet, handy-dandy shakers included in your packet. There are going to be a water bottle in your pack packet. We're going to take an average of two, three, four, five, six, seven of those each time you're in. And for the gentlemen in the group, we have this very fine-looking, eco-friendly <laughs> carrying case that's included in your startup kit. So your startup cost of $299.40 includes your $50, $50 lifetime consultation fee, three months worth of body composition analysis, over a week's worth of food and a month's worth of nutrients. You come back the next week, you need three more boxes of food. Each box of food costs 30, so it's 90 per week. That's in which phase? One. What happens in phase two? One less a day. We drop a box of food, so it goes to 60 per week in phase two. In phase three, we're going to introduce you onto more real foods, and we're going to give you a meal replacement uh, uh, packaged food. So we keep it at 60 per week for those two weeks of phase three. But then we go into phase four. And phase four, you can do phase four for zero dollars a week. Now, if you can do phase four for zero dollars a week, and you've already paid your lifetime consultation fee, so how much does it cost you to come back and visit with a diet coach? Any excuses not to let us help you keep the weight off for the rest of your life? No excuses. We want Billings Last Diet to be your last diet. So we build our program where you can utilize our services and our diet coaches for the rest of your life. Do you know of any other program where they stick with you from the beginning to the end with, with uh, individualized coaching. We don't either. That's why we've had such great success, not only losing weight, but helping people keep it off for the rest of your life. I'm sorry, I sorry my phone went off. So yes. does the, the cost per week include the supplements also? It's that close. Separate? That's why it's about $15. You'll notice that 15 times 7 is a little more than 90. <laughs> that's, that's why it includes... Okay. Close to the supplements. Yeah. Any other questions on cost? The only time we're going to get you more than the 90 per week is when you do buy your supplements at 30 days when you run out of supplements. You're going to be on the program for more than three months and you only have three months of body composition analysis. So at three months, you'll buy three more months of body composition analysis. That's $50 for the next three months. We only charge you three times total for body composition analysis. Once here, once at three months, and then once at six months. After that, your lifetime body composition analysis. We never charge you again for body composition analysis. Any other questions on costs? Very good. 
Not everybody qualifies for the program. Cannot have had a heart attack in the past six months. You need to be cancer free for three years. There's some exceptions to that. I'll visit with you individually if you have concerns there. You can't have Parkinson's disease. You can't be on lithium. You can't have cirrhosis of the liver. You have to have at least one good kidney. You cannot be pregnant or nursing. And you have to be motivated to do the program. We've told you this is an all-in deal. We have phenomenal diet coaches that will help you, but they can't lose the weight for you. Why not? And so <laughs> we would have a long line if it worked that, e if it worked that easy. So you just have to be motivated. How do we determine how motivated you are to lose the weight? At the bottom of your health profile, it said how important is it for you to lose the weight. If it's not an 8 or above, we won't start you until it becomes that important to you. It really is an all-in deal. Very good. Any questions? Yes. This cost and the link and stuff. Do you have like a printout on that? Maybe no, but we can, we can write we can write it on a on a brochure for you, so you can get a breakdown of the costs. Yeah. Well, just so I have an idea. Yeah. Absolutely can. Yeah. We'll do. So let me introduce you to the diet coaches, and they're going to sample you some foods. Looks like hot chocolate and cookie dough swirl tonight. So have one of the drinks and one of the uh, taste of one of those bars, and we'll start with Jen. <laughs> I'm Jen, and I did the diet uh, ten years ago, and um, I lost 37 pounds, and I've kept the weight off, totally through education, dedication, um, and I really wanted to keep the weight off. I've, I've had seven children, and once I was done having kids, I knew I wanted my body back, <laughs> and. I've been able to keep it off just through education, so it's awesome. Very good. Yeah. And I'm Kathy. I started the diet in 2010. Oh my God. <laughs> six <laughs> so years ago. It's been a while ago. So six and a half years ago. <laughs> yep. And then um, I started working here as a diet coach in 2012, so I've been here about seven years now. But I lost over 60 pounds in about six and a half months during the, the, the diet. Very good. Yeah. Yep. And this is. Vanna White, I mean Glia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I'm Glia, and I spent nine years this month that I started, and I lost 39 pounds, and we've been here a long time. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows you that we really. These know are the works. old ones. They're the ones. <laughs> the these are our <laughs> oldest diet, the ones that have been here the longest, actually. <laughs> so you can see that we know that it works, and um, we've seen lots of people do it. We've seen. Truck drivers, surgeons, nurses, people that work at the mines, people that work at the refineries, um, and they've all been very successful with with doing it, which has really been pretty exciting for us. And so, we just really like it. We know it works. Oh, but we've heard all the excuses too. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we just go, oh, check, check. <laughs> as well as all the whining, and the whining along yes. with it. as you develop a lifestyle change, any. All growth takes place outside of your comfort zone. So we're going to get you out of outside of your comfort zone to lose the weight, and then we'll help you keep that weight off by developing a new lifestyle. Okay. We've also had a dieter. She lost 137 pounds. She drank three chocolate drinks a day, had her chicken and her vegetables for eight months while she lost her weight. But if you would like to do something different, <laughs> uh, we make extra money off of her doing this. Right. <laughs> but to help you guys out, uh, this was a phase one dieter, and she says, oh, I think I can take the tomato basil packet and I can make bread out of it. And so she has some wonderful recipes um, using the packets, but also just regular food that are just really, really good and you'll really, just really like it. So, and. March 28th, Dr. Williams is teaching the emotional eating class. It's wonderful, and it's something you need to come and attend. So, so how, many emo how many of us are emotional eaters? Everybody. It's called here. all of us. <laughs> and so come learn about it. It's, it's all part of the education cycle. So once a year, we teach an emotional eating class so that everybody can learn. Kathy, I have to learn who your favorite dieter is. The ones that come here each week are excited to step on that scale because you know you followed the plan and you want to see that weight loss and and that's the way to do it, you know. It's a straight line between point A to B. Don't do the the wavy line. Just do it's the hard. Eat the sheet is what we say. Eat right? the sheet. So, Doesn't yeah. mean you eat the paper. If yeah. you do, we'll give you a new one. But you eat what's on the yeah, sheet and nothing else. Yeah. So yeah. Jen, tell us about uh, the changes that they can expect. 
Oh, um, my favorite part, he always teases me. Um, I love when uh, people are on medications that they are able to get off medications through their doctors, you know, changing high blood pressure, or even diabetic medication. Um, it's huge. People's inflammation goes down and it's a big, it's, it's, it makes a big, a big difference and it's relatively quickly. It is. It's very For those quick. of you that suffer from heartburn, we yeah. tell you, give it two weeks. Yeah. And the heartburn is something mm -hmm. Very good. So introduce the other diet coaches, Jen. Um, we have Celine, and she lost 60 pounds, and she gained just a little bit back and came back, and then we hired her. So As she's a diet coach. in phase one currently right now. Tuned and up, she has just a few pounds before she lost. She lost. She gained about 20 pounds back. Yeah. And she's just, just about to polish pounds, that off. Yeah. Um, and then we have Tooney. He's been with us for a year and a half now, and maybe a little longer. And he um, lost uh, 103, 105, but now he's been bodybuilding in phase four and losing way more fat. He's lost like 123 pounds of fat. So we have Tiny Tooney over here somewhere. <laughs> Tiny Tooney is right here. Mm -hmm. And he's. And if you see that picture, he needs another after picture because he just looks small. So you know something, you know the diet coaches know something about the program because they've done it. They've done it. And they're continuing to live the lifestyle. Their goal is to help you lose the weight, and then their goal is to help you keep it off for the rest of your life. So they're going to use all of their talents and abilities and combined as a group to coach you to help you lose the weight and to help you keep it off for the rest of your life. Any doubts that anybody here can lose the weight? Nope. And the reason why? You see it it's again, again. You see it and again. again. They see it mm -hmm. every day. We were teaching last yes yesterday at noon, yeah. and you said the person that just left had lost 137 pounds, and I he's think? still losing. Still losing, man. <laughs> and so it just it just happens if you'll put the right equation, the right step on the first side of the equation, then the last the the end of the equation will, will fill out. Very good. So if you want to get started. Now, I want you to know there's more than four products. You have to know there's more than four. There's like 90 different products that you can utilize. So if you have a minute, follow me over to the Diet Coach Rooms, and I'll show you some of the products that are there. If you want to get started on the program, we can start three tonight. Well, now, I can do two. Yeah. Couples, and then two okay. couples count as one. So, right. three. But if you want to start... Tonight, we can get a few of you started tonight. If you want to start another time, you just visit with a diet coach and they can get you started another time. Nobody starts this program until they sat through the same boring class you just sat through. Because education is the key. That's why we've had long-term success, because we're dedicated to education not only on weight loss, but keeping it off for the rest of your life. So we hope you found it informative. Did you get the information you were looking for? Empowering, meaning the information you learn will benefit you even if you don't start the program, if you'll apply it. And I hope it was a little bit entertaining, because it was science that we talked about.